Sony! Nim Sony! This is part 5B of this tutorial. If you missed the last one, watch that one first. If not, let's go! And we can get over to scripting. Now as we've created a new character, object, we now need to add our script once again. But what I'm going to do before we do that is actually rename our script. We had it originally called test. I'm going to change it now to player. And of course, because that's a class file, we need to open it and make sure that our class is also named exactly the same as our script file itself. So here we are. It'll compile at the bottom here and we can see it in here. It's a working script. Attach it to our player object. Remember, this is the player object, the one with the character controller attached, not any of the sub objects. So if you click on something, it might highlight only that object. Make sure you highlight specifically the overall player, the one with the character controller attached, so that we can attach the player script to the correct player. We're going to be using the cam pivot, same as before. We're going to use the cam, same as before, for the camera controls. But we won't be needing the other two, because those were just for testing. So here, attach both as you were. And we're going to remove these two, because they were just for testing and explaining in the last video. Open up our script once more and remove them. There we go. And the same from down here. Now then, let's clean up our mess. There we go. What we want to do now is separate our update systems into different functions. First up here, we grab our input. After that, we calculate input relative to our camera. And then we apply that to our object's movement. Let's separate that into different functions here. So I like to use the word do at the start to explain that it's one of my major functions that does some actual work. So here we do do input. We want another line, which is do camera or calculate camera, we could say. In fact, I'm going to do that. Let's say calculate camera. And then one more line, do move. There we go. We now have three functions, which we need to create, of course. So void, do input, open close bracket, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. There we go. Three functions. Grab the names. One's void cam calculate camera and the other one is void to move. Now, one of the problems here is that we're creating some vectors here that we're using later on, which would be in a different function. These vectors need to be accessible outside of the function they're created in. So we need to create them entirely by themselves. Here, camf and camr, we need to create outside of the two functions. I want f first, there we go. And of course, we don't want to recreate them in the code. Let's move our objects, let's move our script overall into their respective functions. So here we have our input calculations, which go in our do input. Here we have our camera calculations, which go in our calculate camera. Oop, that should have been cut. There we go. And then we're going to have our transform move into our do move function. Clear this all up so that we've got just the three functions being run in our update and each of the functions nice and separate. Now we can see everything a lot more clearly because we can close up the calculate camera and we can close up our do input. And now we're only working with the thing when we need to work with. When we're moving our character, again, as we know from the last video, we need to move our character controller directly rather than moving the transform of the object. So we're going to need access to the character controller, which I'm going to do here. So we want character controller. Let's name him mover. This is something that I like to call my character controllers. And we're going to need to set that variable at the start of our game. Now, what we were doing previously was accessing variables, uh, accessing objects from our game by using the public name here at the start. But we don't need to do that because the character controller is attached to the same object that the script is attached to. So we can just grab it straight from script. So void start. That gets run when we start our game for every object that it's in that it's uh, implemented in. Mover equals get component of type character controller. 
beautiful, simple, works. That's it. We have here, when we look in our do move function, transform.position plus equals, and then we're applying that movement. So what we need to do firstly is calculate and keep that vector that we've calculated for our camera's movement and say, let's say that's our, mm, what's it called, expected. So it is our intention variable. There we go, intent. Intent equals cam f multiplied by input y, cam r multiplied by input x. Something I explained in the last video. That allows us to relatively move compared with the camera's direction up and right. Very useful when we press up, it moves forward compared to where the camera is looking. Very useful. So we don't need this anymore. What we want to do now is apply our movement to our mover. But we're doing this in a slightly different way. In fact, before we do that, I'm going to move our intent variable so that it's publicly accessible as well. Let's create a little set of uh, commented area here so that we can uh, separate things again. The same way we separated functions, I'm going to separate our usable variables here so that we can, uh, you know, we can see what's going on. So at the top here, we have object references here. So objects. Down here, we have some camera variables. After that, we have some input variables. And then we have some physics variables here. Now, the most useful physics variable is, of course, velocity. So this is where we start getting into actual physics. Although we're not going to use real world physics here, we're going to start doing some fakery. So our velocity is, of course, the speed and direction of the object that's moving, which, of course, is what we add to our position. So the way real world works, acceleration is the change of uh, velocity over time. Velocity is the change of position over time. So change of position over time, that means we take our position and we apply that velocity over time. So all we have to do here is mover.move the same way we did before. And in the bracket, oops, that's semicolon at the end. In the bracket, we put velocity and we times it by time. Down to time, there we go. So now our object will move according to velocity. All we have to do is mess with velocity now. So what we want to do here is just for the understanding's sake, let's say velocity equals intent. Intent, of course, is the movement direction we've, we've calculated relative to our camera and our keyboard input or our controllers. And then, of course, we're just making velocity equal that. Let's multiply it by five as a nice uh, sort of round figure for the speed. Press play. Watch how this works. So we have now movement for our character with much neater code. This is something we had yes, uh, in the past video, previous video. But you can see something's really off about it. It's very direct. Every speed is just instant to sort of move. As soon as I press, you're moving instantly. And as soon as I let go, you stop. We're going to change that by smoothly moving towards our intended variable for velocity. So instead, firstly, what we want to do as well is actually give ourselves a speed variable, which we can work with instead of just multiplying by five. So let's multiply by speed. And of course, in the physics section of our commented area, float speed equals five. There we go. We now have speed as a variable, so we don't ever get confused. What we're going to do here, instead of velocity equals intent, we actually want to move it towards that. But we're going to use a very useful function called vector3 lerp. So here we are, vector3 dot lerp. Open the brackets, close the brackets at the end here. It has three parameters. One is the starting point which in this case is velocity. So we're moving from velocity to intended speed. And we're going to do that at a certain rate. And that rate, of course, is not just tilt time, but is our acceleration. Remember, the change of, change of velocity over time is our acceleration. We need a variable called accel. So duplicate our speed variable, 
acceleration now. Let's set our acceleration to something nice and slow so that we can see it happening, which uh, is 2 in this case. And let's press play now. Watch the difference. Remember how when we were pressing up, down, left or right, it was moving instantly to that speed? Now, he sort of floats into the speed that we expect. Still very, very cool. And of course, it's doing all the collisions because we're using a character controller. So he slides along the wall there. And he's very floaty, but you can see we can control that just by changing the acceleration. Very, very useful code. It already feels a lot smoother than what you'd normally get by using maybe Unity's own default scripts and stuff, or just whatever you want to learn really quickly. Any of that really quick stuff that you've built. No need, no need for any of that. This script is pretty short anyway. What we want to do here is something very unusual. Well, it's actually much more realistic. A character in the real world generally doesn't move sideways or backwards. Um, they usually do that, you know, to, to avoid obstacles and stuff. Imagine when you're moving somewhere or when you're walking around the streets uh, in the real world, you tend to turn into the direction you want to go and then actually go in that direction. We're going to do that here by rotating our character first and then moving in the direction we want to go. So velocity now, instead of going only in our intention variable, we're not even going to move in that direction. Instead, we're going to change this to transform.forward multiplied by intended direction dot magnitude, which is of course always going to be 1. So transform.forward multiplied by speed. That means we're always going to move forward, whichever way forward is, multiplied by our speed, which of course doesn't include our input. So in fact, we do need the magnitude of our intent. Whoops, sorry about that. That was me not figuring things out. We actually need inputs magnitude. There we go. That's much better. So speed is, of course, the top speed that we're going to reach. Input dot magnitude is the amount of input that we're applying. So when we press up, it goes to one. If we let go, it goes to zero. Transform dot forward means we're always going to move in the forward direction. If we save this and run it, you'll see that no matter what I press, he's always going to move forward. Quite annoying. There you go. You can hear me typing different directions and he's always going forward. He's just moving off into the distance. We're going to all we, all we have to do here is rotate our character. How do we do that? We're going to use the same logic here that we used for lerping, but we're going to do it to our rotation. So first, we want to make sure that we only do it when we're input when we're actually applying some input. So, check our input.magnitude is larger than 0. And then in the brackets, we're going to do our rotation code. Create a new rotation. Quaternion rot. I like to use rot as a nice uh, temporary rotation. Equals. And this is essentially our intended rotation. So quaternion dot look rotation. This creates a, excuse me. This creates a rotation from the direction that we give it. And of course, that direction is our input. There we go. It's just a vector effect anyway. Oh, actually, it's our intended this uh, direction. So that's intent. And then we just rotate our character into that direction. So quaternion. Oh, no, not that. Rotation. There we go. So transform dot rotation equals and see we're using the same logic here as we did for our velocity. Except we're going to rotate our character directly equals quaternion dot rotate dot lerp transform rotation of course this is our starting point we're going towards the new rotation that we've calculated and we're going to do that at a specific speed so now we're going to need another useful variable which in this case is turn speed there we go and remember we're moving the rotation directly we're not creating a rotation velocity which means that when we apply the change that is actually speed that we're applying not acceleration like we did to velocity you have to understand the difference of each thing that we're actually doing here so turn speed we need that as a variable again we need another float and this is where you can see why 
I have this nice commented area here specifically for physics. It explains what we're doing in each segment. Turn speed, we're going to set that to a nice 5 as well. So now when we press a button on our keyboard or when we move our analog stick, we'll have that input there. We'll create an in intent variable out of that. We'll create a rotation that looks in that direction and we'll re rotate our object into that direction. Then we create a velocity that is going forward in our forward direction which has changed because of our rotation and we'll move our object from that velocity as we do every frame. Run this and we'll see how cool this works now in game. So here we're just pressing right, we'll press left, we'll press down, we'll press up. You can see he just moves into the direction he wants to go and he very much walks a bit like a car but it's very smooth, It's very. it just works nice and neatly. This is much better than just pressing a button and moving in that direction and then rotating towards it afterwards. He's always moving forward, even if that forward isn't the direction we want to go, instead he'll just turn towards it. Of course we can change our rotation speed, we can change our acceleration, we can change our total velocity speeds, and that controls how our character will move. If we increased our acceleration massively to instead of 2, let's say 8, we will very quickly get to top speed now. So when we press play, we press left, very quickly he sort of starts moving into that, into that speed and you can see he doesn't sort of float about anymore. Of course we can increase our rotation speed and we do the same thing and I'll show you how to control that in a nicer way than what you expect. We're not just going to give it a, di a direct number like 8 or 5 or 2, we're going to change it depending on how our character is moving. That gives us much more control over our character and it still gives us smoothness when we're moving fast. But when we're stopped and we're moving slow, we don't have to wait for him to turn all the way around. We'll do that in the next video. Come back when, you, when you've done this one have a look at all the scripts, understand everything that we've done so far. Goodbye!